look at step back and see why these layoffs are happening now, if we look at our uh, industry prior to the layoff before, there was a massive boom. And we had, uh, um, and this was unleashed because of central bank policy, particularly during the pandemic era, all the money printing. But even before that, all of the QE policies by Federal Reserve, the European Central Bank, the Bank of Japan, all of these pursued a very expansionary monetary policy that created asset bubbles, a massive stock market bubble, real estate bubble, and a venture capital bubble. That venture capital flew into startups. It created all these unicorns. And the sad part was most of them are money losing. They're losing hundreds of millions or sometimes billions of dollars and still supported very fancy valuations, 10 billion, 20 billion, all of that. And then the money dried up because inflation rose. They had to cut back on the money supply and that cost uh, into the boom. That's really the sequence. And during that bubble, the, particularly the late bubble period, because of the elevated growth rates, which everybody experienced, including us, a lot of companies went on a hiring spree. But companies often doubled in size or grew 60, 70% in headcount in just two years, which is extremely rapid expansion. And now that you know the money has dried up, suddenly growth has dropped, there is a stall in growth, and therefore naturally layoffs have arrived. That's really the sequence of what happened. Too many companies chasing too few customers often. As a result, marketing spending exploded. You had extreme level of marketing spending and to acquire customers. Often marketing expenditure, even in relatively mature companies, companies that had more than 100 million revenue would go around and spend 60% of it, 65% of it on sales and marketing. 50% was very common and 40% is considered just low. 40% is considered low. And we disagree with that whole approach. And I believe that is the cause of this whole trouble. You have companies that perpetually were losing money and spending 50% to acquire customers. Mm -hmm. that, that was what was wrong with the model. Okay. And then too many companies were created because of VC funding. Companies are cutting back expenses. We are still in the, in the, early in the cycle of this. I believe eventually, the, there will be winners in, uh, uh, emerging from this, but those will be long-term long companies, companies that are able to be profitable on a long-term basis, companies that have kept their cost structures in control, particularly the marketing spending and even uh, infrastructure spending. That's another boom where companies would spend 25% of their revenue on infrastructure and maybe 50% on sales and marketing. You see, there's not, that doesn't leave very much for the rest of it, R&D or all of it. So that was the problem, it's a structural problem, and it will correct itself over long, you know, over a five, 10 year period. We never overspent on marketing. We had, and during the boom, that meant we actually accepted a lower growth rate than competition. We accepted as a necessary price for keeping our marketing expense under control. And, and, I, and that stood us well when the uh, winter arrived, marketing expenses were cut back everywhere. We also cut some of our marketing uh, expense, but on a relative term, we didn't have to slash that much. Mm -hmm. And second, we also attracted more durable customers during the bubble because the companies that are only purely here because of our excess marketing expense, we did not win those customers. So then that created naturally a different cohort of customers. And those customers are long term with us. And we also are attracting customers that are very value conscious. And that matters in the downturn. We provide a deeper value. We have a breadth and depth of product portfolio. We have deeper integration. We have incredible value in our product offering. So value conscious customers are also coming to us. So those are the reasons we are able to cope during this downturn. Today we are winning a lot, the highest number of customers ever in our history than even during the boom, which is something that's remarkable. We now have 650,000 customers globally. We think we'll reach the million mark in the next 12 to 15 months, okay. which is incredible. So that is the pace at which we are adding customers. That pace has actually quickened the last year, year and a half, even during this economic disruption. Mm -hmm. That is something very impressive. That means we are attracting that value conscious customer worldwide. And also our geographic coverage of customers is impressive. And our concentration of revenue in US and Europe uh, is one of the lowest in the SaaS industry. 
It has worked definitely well for us, so we will stick with that model. But also it has given us the freedom. For example, now during this downturn, we can say we'll forego profit, we'll, we'll be willing to suffer a reduce, erosion in profitability, even erosion in growth, all of it, so that we can protect our employees from layoffs. Mm -hmm. This is the kind of choice public companies cannot make, VC funded companies cannot easily make. Some of this would have happened, but we are still able to power our way to growth because we are still gaining a lot of new customers. Mm -hmm. so, and on a global level, we still have a long way to go. I mean, we are only at a billion plus level now. We think we can be 10 billion. And even then, we'll have another 10x for a 100 billion opportunity. So there's a long uh, road ahead for us. We are actually, we are well comfortably ahead of 1 billion now. Okay. And uh, they're still growing like 14, 15% mm -hmm. year over year. And we think we can accelerate the growth if the economic conditions are even moderately okay. And the rest of it, we cannot forecast. Mm -hmm. and, and we can only see, we can only control our execution. What the econ econ global economy delivers, all that we cannot forecast. If you look at our uh, uh, growth rate today, India is the fastest growing market. It's already number three in terms of revenue worldwide. That's both impressive because 10 years ago, India was not even in the, maybe it was barely in the top 10. It was how far down it was for us in terms of our revenue. Two to three percent. And two to three percent maybe. Today, it is now number three in revenue. And, and, and percentage-wise, we don't disclose the breakup, but it's definitely in three years, we will overtake the EU in terms of revenue. India will become number two in revenue. And maybe in 10 years, it could be number one in revenue. All of this is also, you look at the GDP growth, you look at our exports, booming exports. Mm -hmm. And uh, that is something that is very impressive to see. All of that is fueling our growth too, because all of those export companies mm -hmm. need really uh, their CRM systems or other you know, digital transformation so that they can very effectively engage with the world. And we are there to help them. The global economy is a massive earthquake zone and directly due to central bank policy. Let's be very clear who the culprit is. The culprit is the Federal Reserve, the European Central Bank, the Bank of Japan. Those policy makers bear the entire responsibility for all these bank failures, all of it. They are very flawed, deeply flawed policies, which some of us talked about during the time too. It's not like we are just saying it now. We've been saying it for over 10 years. So they bear fundamental responsibility. And unfortunately, they have landed the global economy in a ditch and they have zero cred credibility at this point. So that is the primary uh, problem facing all the companies now. And that's in our sector also that is a problem because we see money just boomed and then it dried up. Mm -hmm. And so that disruption we all have to face somehow. And that's a primary challenge for all of us. Within that then there's of course AI related uh, challenges where AI could uh, make programmers very productive along with marketing and other uh, people. And if demand doesn't grow that fast, that could have employment implications. So that's another challenge that we have to deal with. So these twin challenges, that's what I think all the SaaS companies and all of tech companies in general have to face over the next five years. We didn't have attrition very high during the boom itself. Now attrition has dropped quite a bit. It's at about three and a half, four percent now, which is negligible. It used to be like seven and a half, eight percent. Now it's three and a half, four percent. Even during the bubble, it wasn't very bad for us. Now it has dropped quite a bit. So attrition is no longer a worry. And uh, uh, the rest, you know, we are, we are still investing in our talent creation, our Zoho schools of learning. And you saw the schools today, our Kalaiwani, Kalvi Mayam schools, rural schools we are doing. So all of these are our initiatives to create the talent, rural talent. However, foreclosed on that option, we will we'll stay private.